I'm Minji Lee, a psychometrician, a biostatistician, and health services researcher at Mayo Clinic. In this video, I'll review the use of patient-reported outcomes for total joint arthroplasty. PROs are commonly used in total joint arthroplasty. In this video, I'll provide an overview of the development, validation, and use of PROs in orthopedics. I'll describe considerations for conceptual framework, validity, reliability, factor analysis, and measurement of change. I'll also describe advantages of PROs developed based on item response theory and statistical analysis for PRO data. A patient-reported outcome, or PRO, is any report of a patient's health status that comes directly from the patient about how they function or feel in relation to a health condition and its therapy, without interpretation by a clinician or anyone else. PROs can be disease-specific or generic. They can be used in clinical studies to measure the effects of a medical intervention or changes in the health status. Total Joint Arthroplasty, or TJA, registries broaden their focus to PROs both before and after surgery. This is because pain and functional limitations are the main indications for surgery and could also be early signs of post-surgery complications. PROs are used for several purposes in orthopedic practice, for example, as screening tools or patient-centered care with feedback of PRO results to patients and clinicians. PROs should ideally be integrated in the electronic health records to monitor recovery of function and pain relief after surgery over time. In the research setting, PROs are used in comparative effectiveness research to explain the differential benefits and harms of alternate methods to prevent, diagnose, treat, and monitor TJA to improve care delivery. When it comes to labeling claims, PRO instruments help to measure the safety and effectiveness of new technologies or implants to support labeling claims. FDA uses the fit-for-purpose approach to determine the validity evidence needed to support the PRO instrument's specified use for a regulatory purpose. This means appropriate thresholds for validation evidence are based on the proposed usage in a clinical trial. Considerations to evaluate fit-for-purpose include conceptual framework, number of items, condition or population for intended use, respondent burden, mode of administration, cultural adaptation, or translation availability. When developing a new PRO, subjects have to be closely representative of the intended population of interest. To generate the context of a PRO, interviews are conducted with patients followed by coding of the transcripts. A conceptual framework emerges with a visual depiction of the interrelations of concepts and items. Here is an example of the conceptual framework for the 12-item CUS. It provides three domain-specific scores, pain, function, and QOL, and a summary knee impact score. Each of the three domains has four items. For example, pain domain is based on frequency of knee pain, pain walking on flat surface, pain up and down stairs, and pain sitting or lying. Validity refers to the degree to which evidence and theory support the interpretation of scores for proposed uses. Validation involves accumulating relevant evidence to provide a sound scientific basis for the proposed score interpretations. The evidence includes those based on content, response processes, internal structure, and relations to other variables. Reliability assesses precision and stability with which the instrument measures what it measures. It is often assessed in terms of internal consistency, such as Cronvax Alpha. Reproducibility, or test-retest reliability, gets at the idea that the scores of patients in stable condition should be constant over time. The conceptual framework surrounding multi-item scales is investigated by factor analysis. Factor analysis detects or confirm patterns of correlations among items and one or more underlying factors. A factor is a latent or unobserved variable. The term factor is used interchangeably with domain, construct, or concept. The factor is measured with observed variables such as questionnaire items. We conduct exploratory factor analysis, or EFA, when we don't have a prior theory about which items measure which factors except the number of factors. In EFA, the factor loadings are freely estimated between all factors and items. 
In the table, we can see that item 1, item 2, and item 3 are mostly measuring factor 1, whereas item 4, item 5, and item 6 are mostly measuring factor 2. Based on the item factor relationships, we characterize the factors that are responsible for the covariation in the data. Suppose the two factors that were identified in EFA were pain and physical function. Confirmatory factor analysis, or CFA, starts with a theory about what items measure what. CFA can be used to support the hypothesized structure uncovered from EFA by constraining some factor loadings to zero. For example, the factor loadings from pain construct to items 4 through 6 and from physical function construct to items 1 through 3 are constrained to zero in this CFA. When one uses EFA followed by CFA, independent samples must be used in the two separate analyses. In classical test theory, or CTT, standard error of measurement, or SEM, is the same everywhere along the scale. This is shown as a dashed line in the figure. The IRT-based standard errors are shown with a solid line. They are lower in the middle range. Yet, as the scores become more extreme, such as lower than 50 or higher than 70, the standard errors become higher. This means precision becomes lower. A theoretical advantage of IRT is in a more precise estimate of measurement error. Measurements do not have to be based on the same items as long as the items are calibrated on the same scale. This is a major advantage of IRT as it allows comparison of scores on a trait even if people took completely different items. The outcomes in arthroplasty typically involve the measurement of change. This requires PRO measures to detect reliable and meaningful change. Minimal important difference, or MID, or minimal clinically important difference, or MCID, is the smallest change in a treatment outcome that patients would identify as important. The MID can be derived using three different methods, distribution-based, anchor-based, or the Delphi methods. It serves as an interpretive threshold above which an individual's change is deemed relevant or important. The most popular anchor-based methods use patient self-reported evaluation of change. When there is no credible anchor-based MID value, researchers may use a distribution-based method. When we use distribution-based methods, we often present a range of MID estimates based on standard deviations. MID estimates can vary depending on samples and methods used. Meaningful change in commonly used PROMs in arthroplasty is an active area of research. In general, statistical analysis is the same as for other outcome variables. The choice of methods depend on whether the outcomes are ordinal, binary, or continuous. Here are some practical guidelines when interpreting PRO-based studies. First, Clarify the purpose of the study and whether the PRO measures disease-specific symptoms or generic QOL. Second, check to make sure there is adequate validity evidence to support the interpretations of scores for proposed uses of the PRO. For instance, is a measure able to identify differences in scores over time in patients whose health is known to have changed? Lastly, determine how the data are collected and the amount of missing data. Is a study sample representative of target population? For instance, sicker individuals are less likely to respond to surveys, causing a potential selection bias.